Good Monday morning. You ready to dig back in to chapter one? Last week we had these beautiful identifiers knowing that God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus are all present in this revelation to John. And it starts that John's getting seven letters to seven churches. But we're going to look, um, we're going to start this morning in chapter five, the latter part of chapter five where it says to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priest who is God and father to him, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds. So we know that John's getting this letter to the churches. We know that God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus are all a part of this picture that they've given him grace and peace, that he's not to be afraid and what's going to be revealed. And now there's just this declaration of praise to Jesus to for all that he's done. And I don't think you can sit and think about Jesus very long and it not promote adoration because that's just who he is. But listen how he's described the first way. It says this, Behold, he is coming in the clouds. Now, do you remember in Acts 1 when Jesus was transfigured and taken up to um, heaven that it happened on a cloud? So why wouldn't it make perfect sense that when he returns, because this entire book is about the coming back of Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it make sense that he's going to be returning on a cloud? And then it says this, it says, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will well on account of him. So let's take this whole picture in for a moment. Jesus is coming back. This is what we know according to Revelation. And when he returns, it says every eye is going to see him, even those that pierced him, even those that were a part of the crucifixion are going to see them. Now for years, people had no idea how everyone would see. But I believe this is saying that everyone's going to see past and present are going to see Jesus in this moment when he returns on the clouds. God's God. I don't really know how he's going to do it, but I know this. He says that when he returns on the clouds, when Jesus returns, every eye is going to see him. And then he says this, he says they're going to, and all the tribes of the earth will well on account of him. Can you imagine if you had spent your whole life believing that he didn't exist? And in that moment, your eyes finally beheld him. And you knew that all those things that you had rejected all those years, the stories you had heard in church or the things that creation had shouted to you because scripture says creation declares the handiwork of God. All those things that you mocked or ridiculed or rejected, that Jesus was the savior of the world and then in this one moment he appears on the clouds, every eye sees him, I can imagine that there's going to be much wailing on account of this moment for those that have rejected this beautiful Savior who gave his very life for our freedom. And then he says this, I am the Alpha and the Omega says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Basically, he's saying, I started it and I'm going to end it. I began it with Genesis with nothing but a spoken word. God spoke and light was separated from darkness. God spoke 
and the waters separated. God spoke and the earth was formed. It was all with a spoken word. He was the alpha. He was there at the very beginning. And he's declaring us this in the very last book of this Bible. And I'm also the omega. I am also the last word. And I don't know about you, but in light of the study, yes, he's the beginning and he's also going to be the end. But in light of our life, he also had the first word and he's also going to have the last word. He is the one who was, he is the one who is, and he is the one who is to come. And I am very grateful to know and I'll celebrate this good news with you on a Monday morning. That he is the beginning of our story. And he is also the end.